Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Game Master Bloodworth, and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video, I'm doing a video response to uh, both J. Scott Garibay and Shauner. Uh, I had recently watched a video on, uh, on Shauner's video, and um, he, was, he was responding to J. Scott Garibay and uh, Garibay's discussion on both the Modifius 2D20 system and uh, in particular uh, the difficulty checks. So uh, first I want to start off by um, you know commending J. Scott Garibay uh, for kind of expanding his horizons because he seems to be adding more and more games to his repertoire that he considers to be uh, in many ways better than D&D 5e. So clearly, um, you know, Scott is adopting a, um, a more broader view of what makes, you know, great game systems. And uh, just to list a few that he has, uh, he is on record of saying, you know, were not only excellent game systems, but game systems that in many ways are uh, better than 5e. Uh, Index Card RPG, Marvel, the Marvel Multiversa RPG, Crown and Skull, and, uh, and now Star Trek 2D20. All right, now um, it's, it's very interesting for me to see that uh, that Scott is making this uh, evolution in his opinion on uh, on these different game systems, and uh, I'm not going to go in in this video. I'm not going to go into you know why I surmise he's doing that. Um, you know, a, a lot might have to do with some of the changes that are going on with uh, D and D, you know, 2024, but. Um, but again, that would just be a, uh, an assumption on my part, and I'm not going to go into that. What I did want to do is I want to talk about uh, the 2D20 system and the difficulty checks because, you know, during this uh, video that Shauna was actually uh, critiquing and, and going over, um, Scott had pointed out a, a few things, uh, particularly with the difficulty checks that... Uh, that are not what the system actually does. So I'm going to switch views here and I'm going to come over to here and um, I am going to be talking specifically about the Conan 2D20 system and, and uh, RPG. And this was my introduction to the 2D20 system even though I think it, it predates this particular and this was 2015 that it was produced. So um, but by far, and I, I totally disagree with Shauner when he says that the 2D20 system is crap and, you know, the, um, you know, he was specifically talking about Star Trek Adventures and I'll, I'll go into that as well. Um, and he think he's correct in that Star Trek Adventures is a crap RPG, but not for the reasons he's saying so. Um, but the way that the system works in here is absolutely phenomenal and it actually does support many of the things that I think Shauna looks for in game mechanics that enhance you know role playing or at least a very cinematic um, you know action packed um, adventuring and you know uh, especially combat um, so I, I think that he's just not familiar with the system at all to um, you know to be familiar enough with it to know uh, some of the elements that this does that really does create that cinematic feel uh, to uh, combat so I will talk a little bit about that in detail as well but Scott was framing everything he was talking about uh, around Star Trek Adventures all right, and this utilizes the 2D20 system as well. Um, 
and where Shauner actually misses the mark on saying that this is a crap system isn't because the system itself is is flawed the 2d20 system works really well where this really missed the mark was the fact that when it first released you could only play a um a starfleet cadet all right that's how everybody had to start off and so it just left such an expansive you know, world or, or universe, in fact, such an expansive universe with so many different um, ways that you could approach playing a character in this, uh, in this universe. Um, and it just so limited it that it just made no sense whatsoever that you didn't start right from the get-go and able to play a, a Klingon if you wanted to that was part of the Klingon Empire or Romulan, or you know, or an Orion pirate, if you wish to. That's where this really fell short. Was the fact that um, the the setting of the book was too limited. And then at this point now, my personal favorite is Fallout, and I really like what they're doing with Fallout and how expansive it actually is, and and whatnot. So. Um, you have different um, you have different IPs with Modifius's 2d20 system that you can engage with that system. All right, so let me get to the point that um, I will make where Scott was kind of off the mark. So Scott had misinterpreted what the difficulty um, what the difficulty checks are. All right, what, what he believed was that a difficulty check makes it harder to, um, makes it harder to um, hit the mark, let's say, um, to score a success, all right, in, in a very general term to score a success, rather than <coughs> what the difficulty checks actually do. When the... Um, when the uh, game master decides to make something more difficult, he or she is going to add additional successes required to be successful. <coughs> so that means on a normal task, you're going to roll 2d20. You're going to have a target number that you have to meet. And if you meet that target number uh, or below, uh, it's a roll under system, then you have one success. If on both your two D20s, uh, on both your D20s, you make two successes, then that's going to count as two successes and you're going to gain a momentum. All right, that's in a standard difficulty setting for a task. So you always have two d20s to roll. You always, or you almost always, need just one success off those two die rolls, unless the game master wants to increase the difficulty of a particular task. So if he takes the difficulty from a d1, difficulty one, to a d2. That means that you now need two successes just to be successful. All right, a D3 means that you need three successes just to be successful, which is really a much more difficult task because you're still only rolling two D20s and you're hoping that you're gonna get a multiple success from one roll. And I'm gonna go into that now. <coughs> I'm gonna use the Conan stat block here to uh, explain what I'm doing. So Conan has a, uh, an attribute of brawn and that is a 14. All right, so when he does a sword attack, he needs at least a 14 or lower on a D20 in order to hit. And he normally only needs one success in order to hit the target. So he's rolling 2d20, he needs a 14 or less on one 
or both die. Um, on both die, he'll get two successes. Now, he has a combat rating, a field of expertise of a five. That means that he gets two successes if he rolls a five or less. Same 14 is the required range, right? So a 14 down to a one is his required range. If he rolls a 14 down to a six, he has one success. But if he rolls a five or less, he gets two successes. Now, if he rolls a one, which is like the critical, all right, he is also going to get a, uh, an effect to his roll. So it is going to be an extra addition. So if I look at his broadsword, for instance, when he hits, he's going to roll nine damage die, which is an, a massive amount of damage. All right, he's going to roll nine damage die. And if any of those include a, um, include a critical success, all right, he will either add unbalanced to that roll, which would um, unbalance the target that he hit, or it also includes parrying. So he'll be able to parry an attack as well automatically as part of his function. So that's the, it's the difficulty setting that, um, that Scott misinterpreted, thinking that it just makes it harder to hit. No, it makes the number of successes required a higher number of successes required. All right, now he was correct that you can you can use those momentums that you gain, all right, to add to your dice pool and roll multiple die. All right, um, again, this is multiple uh, action die, which are the D20s. All right, uh, you can also enhance the number of dies that you're uh, increasing your damage as well. So you can instead increase the number of die that you're rolling for damage. So instead of nine in this case, you could roll 10 or 12 or whatever you wanted to add as much momentum as you want. <coughs> so that's the first thing that I wanted to clarify was that the, the difficulty checks were misinterpreted in Scott's original video. Now, getting back to Shauner, as far as saying that the system is, um, you know, the system is a crap system. All right. I certainly disagree with that. I think that the system is really designed to do, um, is really designed to do that kind of very cinematic, um, explosive outcome kind of, uh, of thing if you build up your pool of momentum, all right? And then the, the Game Master, which Scott also points out is very accurately so, uh, the Game Master will also have his or her own pool to, um, to give uh, additional challenges to the players as well. And yes, you can trade off and say, well, I'm going to give the GM some additional uh, hindrances for us in exchange for extra die rolls for me in this one moment. All right. And, and so there can be an exchange of, you know, I will gain momentum. You will gain, uh, gain doom, uh, which is a Conan 2d20, um, reference. So the system is designed to create that very cinematic, uh, action, uh, based like combat and, and then other things as well. Uh, the Conan 2D20 system also has um, displays so that if you do a certain number of actions uh, simultaneously and um, it, it creates like a chain and it unlocks a display in which the character can now, um, for instance, an example is a display where the um, the character will hold up the head of a slain uh, opponent and any of the minions that are in that combat are going to have their morale shattered by seeing that. All right. And 
the, um, the character utilizes that display in lieu of an additional attack. All right, they can spend the momentum to do the display and then have a greater effect over the action. So it's really designed to create that very pulp action feel of both Conan and then other, uh, other IPs that they also have. That doesn't so much match the idea of Star Trek though, you know? And so maybe that's the one area where Star Trek was not the best IP for this 2D20 system. Um, there's some others that I've tried um, in their, in their uh, early stages, uh, the, the testing stages and everything. Um, so John Carter of Mars, I was not a big fan of that either. Um, I actually pass it up. I didn't bother with that. Um, so the system is very good at doing certain things that it is designed for. Uh, and it, it does need the proper matching up with IP in order to really capture that uh, feel that you're looking for. So, so that's my, my big thing on both parts. Um, very good to see that J. Scott Garibay is expanding his horizons, uh, horizons and, um, and acknowledging uh, that there are systems out there that are better than 5e. Um, and and Shauner, um, I mean, you hit a lot of the components, you know, very, very well, you know, in your description. However, I think that if you, if you look at what the system is designed to do within the particular IPs that are out there, uh, it certainly does work better with certain IPs than others. And Star Trek, like you said, is just a terrible um, packaging, and I mean that conceptually, you know, terrible packaging of the Star Trek universe. All right, it just doesn't do what Star Trek should do. Uh, so um, I, I, I know it's, it's very hard to get a copy of the Conan 2D20 system. Uh, it is out of print, and uh, as you, I believe, mentioned in your video, um, you know, Modifius had to destroy whatever back stock they still had uh, when it changed IP uh, over to Heroic Signatures, uh, which is really unfortunate because, again, it's a phenomenal system uh, for, for that IP. It is, you know, and I will argue, it is the best rule set for the Conan IP that has ever been created. All right. It is by far the standard bearer. And I don't think that heroic signatures with their new Conan RPG are going to be able to match it. Um, you know, the game system was just that rock solid. Um, it is far better than, um, than Mongoose's Conan RPG and certainly better than TSRs back from the 1980s. So um, certain, certain IPs match really, really well with the 2D20 system. And, um, and I encourage you, Scott, to look at other systems other than or other RPGs other than the Star Trek Adventures, uh, which is very, very uh, flawed. Um, unless you're looking at second edition, um, but I don't think second edition did very much to really expand the, uh, expand the universe, um, or, or if it had expanded the universe, um, that's really only just making up for what it should have had in the, uh, in the first place. So I'm going to leave it there. I mean, that's pretty much where I stand on that. And, um, you know, I welcome responses. And uh, <coughs> if you want to, uh, if you want to disagree, you're welcome to do so. If you have other points that you think I missed uh, in discussing both 
uh, individuals' takes on the Modifius 2D20 system. I welcome those as well. And uh, as always, thanks for joining. You have a great rest of your evening. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen or at a convention table sometime soon. Uh, especially if you want to talk about uh, Modifius's 2D20 system. Uh, I've been covering a lot lately of the Fallout RPG. I'm really loving the system as I'm going through it. Um, and I can't wait to actually launch a campaign running that system. So, um, and I will probably do some, I probably will do some uh, videoing of actual play with Fallout when we get to that point. Uh, and so I, I know that Shauner will look forward to seeing the actual play and, and to see if you can actually role play Fallout uh, the RPG. So thanks for joining. Have a great evening. Take care.